Hey guys, what is up? It is the Fast Break Report here bringing you guys another vlog and what a day. What a day on the Twitters. We got Jalen Brown for five years, 304 million bands, okay? 304 million doll hairs. The fucking NBA is out here handing out dudes overpaid contracts like fucking free samples at Sam's Club. I mean, this shit is wild, bro. 304 million dollars. Oh my goodness, oh my damn, do I got an opinion on this one. You know what, man? I'm not even gonna front. I understand why teams do this, right? I understand why teams come out here and overpay players on their teams. I do. But we paying $304 million for Jalen Brown? Final years were $68 million? I mean, let's just look at the history of this. Okay? Let's take a history lesson, shall we? Now... I understand real quick, we, we're having an issue right now in the NFL where players are coming out and saying, you know, oh, running backs don't get paid, running backs don't get paid. Well, there's a reason why running backs do not get paid in the NFL, and it's because they have a lifespan of about five years max before they just fall off a fucking cliff, okay? There's a reason they don't do it, and at least the NFL has a little bit of like, I don't know, self, a little bit of self-respect, to say, you know what? Fuck you. We'll find someone else. The NBA is not one of those places. Okay? And I, I understand why. But here's the thing. If you're in the NBA, okay, there are certain teams that have to do these things. There are certain teams that absolutely, positively have to overpay their stars. Okay? And it's all small market teams. It's your Charlotte Hornets of the world. Okay? It's your Indiana Pacers of the world. It's your Sacramento Kings. Your Minnesota Timberwolves. Okay? Like, your, your Orlando Magics. Okay? It's those teams. Those are the guys that should be overpaying for players. Not if you are the fucking Boston Celtics and you're one of the winningest franchises in the history of the fucking league. Okay? Like, here's the thing, man. Jalen Brown just got paid Steph Curry money. He just got paid LeBron money, Giannis money, Jokic money, Embiid money. Okay? Devin Booker money. Okay? KD money. Luka Doncic money. And he is not any of those players. And more often than not, this shit does not work out. I, actually, I can't remember a time where it has worked out. I mean, it's it's one thing to uh, to give a super max contract to one player on your team. It makes sense in that instance, okay? Or if you're the Golden State Warriors, yeah, you pay the shit out of Stephen Curry and you max out Clay and Draymond, but you don't give them super max deals. You know why? You know why you don't give them super max deals? Because you end up like the Clippers, a team with two guys, and your your whole success. Rises and falls on two guys who are making $50 million a year and you can't afford to put shit around them because you have too much money tied up in two guys. Remember when the Lakers, like, when they, they, like, after they traded for Westbrook, they were out here scrambling to find shit, like, digging motherfuckers out of the weeds and shit, hoping they can, like, brush the dust off of Trevor Ariza and he's gonna come out and come out and be the same fucking player he was in high school again? They were out here, Rajon Rondo, Dwight Howard, Carmelo, like, they were pulling up everybody they could find on vet minimum deals to try and make that team work, Okay. Well, that was before the Westbrook trade. But it's just the idea, like, once they traded for Westbrook, they were scraping the bottom of the barrel to find motherfuckers as well that would come in there and help them win a championship. And it didn't work, okay? It worked the first time around. It worked in 2020 with AD, Braun, Kyle Kuzma, um, KCP, you know what I'm saying? Like, they, they made that work because that was a solid team. But once you start getting into the two two super max three star players territory, it starts getting to be slim pickings out there for role players. And I just think to myself, I can remember back to when I was in college. Mike Conley had just inked like the biggest deal in NBA history with the Grizzlies. It was some crazy shit like five years, $157 million, $150 million bands, something like that. And at the time, everybody was saying the same shit I'm saying now. That much money for a guy who's never even made an all-star team or has only been a one-time all-star, never even made an all-NBA team. Like, 
That's what we were saying. And now I look at this and I'm like, Jalen Brown just got paid $304 million because he made an all NBA team this year. That's it. That's, that's, that's what we're talking about. And I always laugh a little bit because when I make videos about like the Pacers trading for guys like Carl Anthony Towns and DeAndre Ayton, the number one thing people always say is overpaid, overpaid, overpaid. You know what? You're right. They are overpaid, but they're not. $304 $304 million overpaid, okay? Like, people say that, they and, and to some extent, they're right, but, like, everyone's saying Carl Anthony Towns is overpaid. Not now, he's not. <laughs> not now, he's not. Not now. Not when, not when the NBA's handing out $304 million to Jalen Brown. And the problem I have with this whole thing is the Celtics didn't need to do this. They didn't. They did not need to sign Jalen Brown to $304 million over the course of five years. Because the fact of the matter is, okay, here's the consequences of this move. They have Chris Stapps Porzingis on a one-year deal, and it's a player option, okay? He picked it up. He's playing for he's playing for the Boston Celtics this year. Great. Are you going to be able to bring him back next year? Probably not. What about Robert Williams? Robert Williams is pretty good. Damn good defender. You're going to be able to bring him back now? Probably not. Depends on how, how that contract works out, but you got to try to bring him back. Al Horford's on the brink of retirement. I think Al Horford's only got one or two years left. Marcus Smart is officially gone. Brogdon, Malcolm Brogdon, yeah, he's good. Derek White's still good. They still got a solid roster, but it is slowly going to diminish from this point on. They spent all this money on Jalen Brown just to be like, you know what? We're going to have to trade him in two to three years. That's what's going to happen. When has this ever worked? That's what I want to know. When has it ever worked? The last time I think something like this actually worked was in Miami. I think Dwayne Wade took less money just to get LeBron there and Bosh. Okay, the players ain't doing that in today's NBA, boys. It just it don't it just don't seem like that shit is happening. So, like, look at the Utah Jazz. They signed Rudy Gobert to that huge deal, traded him. Okay. Bradley Beal, the Washington Wizards, signed Bradley Beal, $251 million. They were in salary cap space hell, okay? Traded him, okay? Like, this has been a thing throughout all of history. Damian Lillard signed him to a huge huge extension a, couple, a year or two ago, getting traded. You know why? Because the fact of the matter is when you overpay players for more than what they're worth, you can't afford to put shit around them. That's the problem. Why do you think Portland... Okay, is in the situation they're in right now because they got to try to retain the shit that they have while paying an ass ton of money to Damian Lillard just for loyalty reasons because fuck it. Like, I, I, I wish I could be an NBA GM, bro. I really do. I wish I could be an NBA GM because apparently they fucking live every single day of their life by YOLO, pay them. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you're the Celtics, you do not have to do this. Like, it would be one thing if Jalen Brown bought something to the table that was irreplaceable. But the problem is, he dribbles the ball like a fucking middle schooler, okay? He's good for maybe two or three playoff games, and if you need him in a game seven, good fucking luck, okay? Like, that's the problem I have with this, is he's getting paid Steph Curry, LeBron, Giannis, Luka Doncic, Kevin Durant, Devin Booker, etc., etc., type money, when he's not that guy. And so I think to myself... Okay, if you're the Celtics, why didn't you just trade them? Trade Jalen Brown to someplace else, and then in the offseason, next upcoming offseason, go sign DeMar DeRozan. DeMar DeRozan can put the same shit on the table that Jalen Brown can at a significantly cheaper price. Like, do, do NBA GMs, like, not look at the upcoming, uh, like, NBA free agency class? Like, that's what I don't understand about this. They went balls deep on this contract, okay? And just so that in two or three years, they're going to lose all their role players. Unless guys are just feeling generous and want to come back for nothing. Like, I, like Donovan Mitchell, another guy, Utah Jazz signed him, ended up trading him. Wasn't enough. Donovan Mitchell and Rudy Gobert wasn't enough. And I just think to myself, yeah, you got Jason Tatum, you got Jalen Brown. They're a pretty good duo. They'll get you to the playoffs. I will say that together they'll get you to a playoffs. But... If, if I'm going to be honest, if Jason Tatum got injured and Jalen Brown was asked to carry the Celtics to the playoffs, I really don't think he could do it. I, I, I'm just going to call it what it is. Like, that's probably going to be a bold take for this video considering the team that they have, but I don't think Jalen Brown could do it. And not, not in this NBA. And, and it's just like, I think to myself, like, 
I get why teams overpay for these players because they can't lose them for nothing. But, you know, like we look at guys now like DeAndre Ayton don't look too overpaid to me. Jalen Brunson don't look too overpaid to me. Carl Anthony Towns don't look too overpaid to me. Tobias Harris don't even look too overpaid to me anymore. You know what I'm saying? Like, Pascal Siakam don't look too overpaid to me anymore. Like, there's there's a lot of guys out there that a lot of people were saying, well, this guy's overpaid, this guy's underpaid, yada, yada, yada. The NBA is 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 the the sport you put your like if your if your kid excels at any sport and you want them to play a sport, make sure they play basketball or soccer. Okay, one of those. Forget baseball. I remember as a kid, everybody said if you if you want your kid to make money, you know, ten years, three hundred million dollars, let them go play baseball. No, 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 no. If you want your kid to make money and they want to play a sport and they're passionate about soccer or basketball, I would say choose soccer because soccer pays a lot more. But it's just the idea. Like if you're an American and they like basketball or football, you better put them on the basketball court because <laughs> the NBA is just handing out money, man. Like, they, they, they are made of money with this new CBA. And I just think to myself, man, this is going to put them, the Celtics, in salary cap space hell. And they are not going to be able to get out of it. They, they're going to be another team where it's like, yeah, they have Jalen Brown, they have Jason Tatum, but that is all they have. And Danny Ainge will do something. Or not Danny Ainge. Danny Ainge isn't in the front office over there anymore. But it's just the idea, like, They'll, they'll, they'll have to figure something out. Like, I, I'm just going to be honest. Jalen Brown's going to be probably traded off of this team in the next year or two. Like, I'm just going to call it what it is. He signed the contract. He got paid. And all this does is make it harder for them to trade him. That's all it does. That's all that signing this does for the Celtics is make Jalen Brown harder to trade. Because Jalen Brown has been in trade rumors for, what, the past two or three years? I mean, there's been rumors of him getting shipped out for a while now saying that Tatum and Brown would never work. And they had Miami on the ropes. Okay, I'm just going to call it what it is. They had Miami on the ropes, and they, they, they fucked it up. They lost Grant Williams. They lost Marcus Smart. They're going to lose Chris Stapps Porzingis. Who knows if they're going to be, be able to bring back Robert Williams now. Al Horford's on the brink of retirement. I mean, they, <laughs> this was a bad move for the Celtics. Like, if it was a small market team, okay, and you and like Jalen Brown's your, your guy, fine. So be it. But... If you're the Celtics, you did not have to do this. And I understand Jalen Brown's a decent player, but let's let's not let's not pretend like his production cannot be replaced. Okay? Especially on that team. Where the Boston Celtics can pretty much get anybody who they want in free agency. So I don't know, man. We'll have to wait and see how this pans out. But I'm gonna bet that Jalen Brown is off of the Boston Celtics in the next two to three years. Guarantee it. I, I would I would I would Put, I would put a whole lot of fucking money on that bet that Jalen Brown is not a Boston Celtic in the next two or three years here because of the contract and the idea that like there's still questions that he he if he even wants to be there like there's rumors he wants to be a number one option and yeah maybe he's capable of being a number one option but it's just the idea if you paid him a lot of money and now you know he doesn't want to be there or if he comes out and says he doesn't want to be there you just made it a whole lot harder to trade that guy. Okay, this is one of those situations where we look back on it like the Damian Lillard situation where we say Portland should have traded Damian Lillard a long fucking time ago. Same thing with Jalen Brown. They should have probably traded Jalen Brown a year or two ago, if I'm being honest with you. Because if you were going to do this, if this was your game plan all along is to sign him to a super max deal, it wasn't a very good game plan. So, I don't know. Tell me what you guys think about this down below in the comment section below. A like helps me out. Subscribe if you guys want to see more on the Fast Break Report and um, out of this motherfucker. Peace, guys.